Okay, I'm going to be pretty uh, pretty quick, try and catch us up on time. I uh, want to thank uh, Jeff and, and Kim Ventry for organizing another Superpod. My request is if I do speak at the next Superpod, I would like to not go right after London. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I got stuck with, with trying to fill those shoes. Um, I also want to thank everybody who's here and thank all of the presenters. Um, this community of people um, is really powerful, really special. Um, these events are incredible. Um, for those of you who know me and kind of know my backstory, you know that uh, Superpod actually contributed in a large part to uh, uh, drastically changing my life and uh, for me being here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, so um, I'm one of the owners of, of Maya's Legacy Whale Watching uh, here in Friday Harbor, and I'm also the U.S. President of the Pacific Whale Watch Association. And some of you may have been out on, on some whale watching boats or watching whales from shore. And just wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about who we are, uh, some of the changes that we're making, and some of the changes that we are seeing out there. Um, so we have 32 companies um, in this association that spans in, uh, from Washington State to British Columbia. We cover a very large geographic range. Um, we leave from 21 different ports, and we share our sighting network uh, with each other and with researchers, and it's, it's an incredible amount of coverage that we have on the water um, on a daily basis, almost out to the mouth of Juan de Fuca, down to Seattle, and up past Nanaimo. So it's, we're seeing a lot of, of different populations and, and different things out there. Um, we are also, uh, we consider ourselves role models out there on the water for good behavior, as well as one of the most progressive uh, whale watching industries in, in the world. We have, um, for uh, 20 years, have set guidelines, uh, voluntary guidelines that, that we started before there was any federal regulations on uh, behavior on the water. And we update those guidelines uh, on a regular basis. A lot, a lot of the updates are based on science. We have some new updates this year. Um, we've set some time limits on groups of whales. But the most important uh, change that we've made voluntarily, and there's no regulation on this, unfortunately, but we are advocating for it. Uh, when we're within one mile of, of whales, we slow down, or one kilometer of whales, we will slow down to seven knots or less. And this creates a drastic reduction in sound. Um, there was a bill in Washington that included, uh, included this to be regulation on the water for all boaters. Um, it, the distance got shortened down to 400 yards and then it never, never passed. But it is something that's, that's in front of the task force as well. Um, but uh, if you've seen us on the water, we do a really good job of coordinating. And because we have such a, a large geographic range and there's a lot out there, we are split up most days and, and pretty spread. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, what, what kind of changes that we're seeing out there on the water. Um, this, the whale watching industry in this, this area really started around the southern resident killer whales. I mean, that, that's what, what was here. That's what people um, saw. And, and interestingly, every super pod, the southern residents seem to be here. Um, and there's this snapshot of, of all the super pods here when the southern resident killer whales are here. It's interesting because um, we're seeing a lot of changes on the water in a very short period of time. And even including this year, we haven't seen a whole lot of, of the southern residents. Um, so it would be wrong of me not to at least give a plug to the humpbacks because <laughs> Um, that's something that's been that has drastically changed just in the short period of time that I've been here and that I that I started whale watching here. When I first started whale watching out here, um, humpbacks were not in the vocabulary of whale watching. You just didn't really see them. They were very rare to see. Um, we now, I think, last year had around 200 uh, documented humpbacks in the Salish Sea uh, during the summertime. This is a picture of one of the humpbacks that, that comes here in the summertime. Um, this is our most iconic humpback. This is Big Mama. Uh, <laughs> Big Mama has been back here every year, every summer since 2001. She has brought six calves with her during that time. And we're seeing more and more humpbacks here every year. We're also seeing some, some cool stuff, cool behaviors that we, uh, last year I think was the first year that we actually um, saw 
some cooperative lunch feeding um, out here. So we're some pretty exciting things. I know that there's lots of, we hear a lot of bad news, but there's good stuff to talk about too. But some of the changes that we're seeing in, in particular with the Southern residents, this is a slide that I grabbed from, from the Center for Whale Research. I downloaded this from their, their website. This is uh, Ken and, and Jane Kogan put this together, but this is, the, this is last year. This is the sighting, the number of days of Southern resident killer whale sightings in these waters. And I mentioned this year, you know, we would always tell people, they always want, people call and they want to know when the best time to see whales. And we tell them, we used to tell them, we would see Southern residents every month of the year, but some months you see them a lot more. Well, this year in May of this year, the first year since Ken has been keeping data that we had zero days of Southern resident killer whales in the month of May. Um, and that's not zero days around San Juan Island, that's zero days in the Salish Sea, in the inland waters. Um, last year, you can see 45 days, and a lot of those days were in the fall, um, down in, in Puget Sound, um, with uh, uh, following the, the chum runs. And so we had, we had a, a record low sight, days of, of sightings of southern resident killer whales. But do you see the bar on the right? Covering that 180 days, that's pretty much to the top. Those are transient killer whales. Those are the big zorgas. And they have a story that has a lot of relevance to this other residents. And it's a story that's not, I don't think it's being told very much um, out there. And, and, but it's something that we're seeing on the water on a daily basis. So we're seeing uh, families of big killer whales almost every day um, out there year round. And they are big, they are fat, they are healthy. We are seeing the same, you know, the same families from the population. We are seeing social groups of multiple families. Sometimes it's two families that are sticking together for a couple weeks. Some days we see seven or eight families all together, very social. Um, and we're also seeing uh, big orcas that are very, have been very rare in these waters. We had um, a couple days this week, we had, uh, one, T173B, who I think has only been documented uh, one other time, one or two other times in the last 10 years in these, in these waters. And we also, a few weeks ago, had um, T175, who I think is, hasn't been documented in these, was only documented in these waters once in 2012. Um, Dave Elfrit from the Center for Whale Research was, that was a, list, a listed whale for him, always wanted to see, and when, when that whale was here in 2012, Dave was off the coast looking for whales that he had never seen before. Um, so Dave, Dave jumped on our, our boat. We went out to take take a look look at um, look at him. But we're seeing lots of lots of transients and uh, lots of big orcas that we haven't seen before. And why are they here? Why are they here so much now when this is a relatively new phenomenon? And we know the reason that they're here is they're getting a lot to eat. They have a lot of food here. This is, the Sailor Sea is the inn restaurant. If you're a big orca, you wanna be seen here. This is the cool place to be. So why is there so much food for them here? They're eating seals, sea lions. They're not eating Chinook, they're not eating salmon. They're eating, eating seals, sea lions, porpoise. And why, are, why is there so much of that here? Well, that, that change originated in the 1970s with the Marine Mammal Protection Act. And seals and sea lions in this area were no longer culled. And their populations have rebounded. And there are lots of them here. And word is spreading among the big orcas that there's a lot to eat here. And, um, you know, imagine if Chinook salmon were as cute as seals and how many Southern residents we would have here. Um, we're seeing, so with food and a lot of social groups, do you know what follows that? Nice. Babies. babies. Lots of big killer whale babies. This is a, a photo of, this was taken last week. Uh, T124A6 was born in 2016. <laughs> This is uh, T49A5, who was born uh, in November of 2017. 
<clears throat> and this is T65A6, who was born in April of this year. Uh, the T65As are commonly referred to as our resident transients because we see them probably more often than, than any other family. And so I have, an, uh, this is unofficial number for you. Uh, for the big killer whales, for the population that we see in these inland waters, between 2015 and 2018, we have somewhere between 20 and 25 surviving offspring. Wow. 20 and 25. Wow. If you go back to 2013, that number is closer to 30. That is a tremendous population growth. And, it, and with that is coming, um, you know, you, it kind of begs the question, are they, we don't have data that goes back when seals were being culled back in the, the 60s or 100 years ago. And it, it kind of makes you wonder, are they, is their population going through a recovery? What were their numbers like 50 years ago when, when seals were, were being exterminated? Were they, did, were they suffering from a lack of food? Um, so their story is very relevant to the Southern residents because the Southern residents can experience the same exact thing. Um, I'm sorry, this is T65. Wait, I'm going backwards. There we go. This is what the Southern residents need. They need that abundance of food this looks like a, a, a big salmon, and maybe from today's standards it is, but not historically. Um, they need the same kind of food that the, the big orcas have to have that same kind of population growth. And we don't have time to wait. They need their blackfish effect, and they need their blackfish moment, and they need it now. Um, and I can't think of a better community to bring that out than this, this community. Thank you.